Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be setting in a static IP address in Linux using NetPlan. This can be done on any Linux distribution that uses NetPlan, and today we'll be using Ubuntu 20.04 in order to go ahead and set a static IP address in. The very first thing we want to do is launch a terminal, and then we want to go over to the NetPlan directory. We can do this by typing cd space forward slash etsy etc forward slash netplan. Then if we press enter, we'll be in the netplan directory. This is where all the configuration files for netplan exist and will allow you to make configuration changes to the local computer or server. And if you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Before we open up a file here in NetPlan to go ahead and set our static IP address, let's make sure we look up the information for our current network. We can do this by typing IP space A and pressing enter here in Ubuntu. And there's quite a bit of information available in here but what I'm looking for is my network adapter that currently has my local network connection. And I can see that by matching the subnet of my network with the adapter. So the very first thing written out to me has a one denoted by it. And that's LO, that stands for loopback here. So this is our loopback device. This is not what we want. This is for local host. But number two here is listed as ENP. 0s3. So I want to go ahead and make note of this adapter. This is the adapter name ENP0S3, at least for me. Yours might be something different, but it's important to make note of this. And then the next thing I'm looking at is to make sure it's on my subnet currently, because by default, Ubuntu and most Linux distributions use DHCP by default. That means a router assigns the IP address directly to the system without you having to do anything. But since we want to specify our own static IP address today, we want to make note of the subnet. So mine is of the 192.168.1 subnet. And I can go ahead and fill in these last three numbers as I want. I can also see that it's of a 24 base here. So this just means that it's of a type sub mask of 255.255.255.0 for me. Yours could be something else. Make sure you go ahead and look this up for your system based on what you have here listed out to you. And that's really it for my network at least. I don't have any other network adapters, only the two. So the low here, the first one, and most people will have this. And then the second one, which is the one I'm more focused on here. And all this other information just belongs to the second adapter. So with all that noted, I can go ahead and begin to set my static IP address. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. I'll go ahead and do LS so I can list out all the files located in my Etsy NetPlan directory. And what I see here is the 01 Network Manager all.yaml file. YAML just stands for Get Another Markup Language and is a type of configuration for NetPlan. You might see other files in here. One to avoid is the 50 cloud init file. Don't make edits to that one. It gets a little tricky if you put a static IP address in there. I suggest doing it in, in this file here, 01 Network Manager All, if you have it. And if you don't have any of these files, nothing's located in NetPlan, you can always create your own. So you can simply create whatever name you want. Just make sure to start it with something like 01 and then dash. You can change this number up based on the priority, but as long as you have at least one .yaml file, it will be read in by the network manager here. So since I have the 01 network manager all, I'll go ahead and open that up with my favorite text editor. You wanna make sure to type in sudo beforehand because you will need administrative privileges in, in order to edit these files. And I'll go ahead and use nano and open up that 01 network manager dash all dot yaml file that's already there. I'll use that one in order to make my configuration for my static IP address. I'll press enter. And then I'll go ahead and go down a few lines in order to get past the ones that are already in here. This right here means there's a network definition using version two of the renderer. So network manager is what controls our network and that's all the renderer stands for. All right, after we're below the renderer here, we'll go ahead and add in something called ethernets. 
and then a colon. Make sure to keep track of your spacing because it does matter in this file. Don't get it messed up because it won't read the config file properly, but we'll of course test it before we commit our changes. So the next thing I wanna do is reference the network adapter name that I looked up earlier with IPA and line up so I'm underneath the H here and then type in ENP0S3, at least for me. That was the network adapter where I wanted to set my static IP address on. So I'll go ahead and put a colon here and then press enter again. If I space underneath the P this time, I'll go ahead and type in DHCP4 and then I'll put no after that. All this means is that we don't want to dynamically allocate our IP address on this network adapter. So we just specify no after the colon. Again, make sure the formatting is the same here. And then we'll go back to this D on a new line and type in addresses. For the addresses, this is where you get to specify the static IP address that you want to use. So my subnet was 192.168.1 and then I specify the IP address that I plan on using at this point. So the static IP address I want to use is four and then put my subnet mask in 20 by doing forward slash 24, which was also supplied to us in the IP space A command that we looked at before. If you don't understand this, make sure to go ahead and look up subnet masks. That way you can go ahead and make sense of what you need to put here. But by default, most networks use the 24 or 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. Next, we'll specify the gateway. So again, we'll go ahead and space over until we're below the A this time, and we'll type in gateway four and then a colon, followed by the gateway for our network. So this is the router that assigns IP addresses or the network device that assigns IP addresses if you have one. So mine's on 192.168.1.1, and by default, most are. Then finally, we wanna specify any name servers that we have. So this is where you can specify a DNS server and or a second DNS server. So I'm going to use name servers here and then press enter. And this time I want to space over until I'm underneath the S and I'll put in addresses again. So this will be the two addresses, my primary and secondary DNS server that I wanna specify. I'll just use Google's DNS server and I'll do 8.8.8.8 for the first one and then separate that by a comma and you can put your second one in, 8.8.4.4 for my secondary. And then I'll close it with a brace here. And that's really it as far as setting up the configuration file to have a static IP address natively on your Linux device that uses NetPlan. Following that, I'll go ahead and make these changes by exiting out and saving the file. So I'll do Control X here in Nano. And it asks me, do I want to save the modified buffer? I sure do. So I'm going to press Y and press enter to overwrite the file. All right, and once we've saved our file, we'll go ahead and test the configuration with NetPlan. And we can do this by typing sudo, so we run it as an administrative user, NetPlan, and then try. Now what this will do is go through our configuration file and just make sure that there's nothing wrong with it before applying it as the next network configuration with our static IP address here in Linux. So let's press enter and make sure things work properly. I didn't get any errors. So it's asking us, do we want to keep these settings and press enter in order to accept the new configuration? It says also automatically that the changes will be reverted if we don't press enter by default. So if there are no errors, this will show up. So we can go ahead and simply press enter and it says the configuration has been accepted. There's also another way to and just apply those changes automatically without having to try. And we can do that by doing sudo netplan apply. And if there are of course no errors, then the settings will be applied and our static IP address will be applied for our local computer here. One thing I'll mention is a try is probably a better way of doing it just because it tries the configuration before actually applying it. Anyways, now let's check our network settings by doing IP space A and see if our new IP address was in fact applied. And sure enough, if we look at ENP0S3, so that's my network adapter, of course yours might be different. We have now applied a 
.1.4 IP address. Yours might be different, of course, based on whatever static IP you wanted to use on a 24 subnet, which just means 255.255.255.0. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully set up a static IP address on your local computer and on your network. Now, this doesn't guarantee that your router will actually assign this IP address every time to your computer. So you might wanna make sure that you've also reserved that IP address in the router as well. So no other device on the network can be assigned that IP address and only this computer can take it. But that's really it. It's that simple to set up a static IP address using NetPlan on Linux. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.